Hi, welcome to the second Ventus feature demonstration video. Um, last one time we showed you a clustering of multiple machines to do a video wall. So this time we're going to show you our new uh, projector blending, warping, shaping uh, tool set that we've developed. In order to show you this, we've uh, taken two projectors and sort of overlapped them. Now these are consumer grade projectors because that's what we had in-house. Obviously if you're doing this you're going to be using professional grade, high quality projectors. Um, that's not a problem. The technology is the same. Your results will obviously be better. Um, and what we're going to do is we have an overlap here. You can see that um, they're both running off one machine in this case, but obviously if you want to have multiple machines together, you saw in the last video how to cluster machines together. Uh, that's no problem. So in this case what we need to do is we need to take this overlap and we need to adjust our content so that it's nicely blended and uh, shaped, adjust it to the um, screen, maybe try and take out some of the rinks, uh, wrinkles and uh, kinks in the screen and uh, make the content look good and we'll show you our tool set for handling that. Okay, so let's uh, go down to the machine and see what we can do. So now what we're going to do is uh, we've gone into our tool here and we'll show you exactly how to um, do the shaping and warping inside our, our software. So. Um, the first thing, of course, is that we uh, set up our uh, system and we see we have the two uh, projectors right here. Obviously, you have more machines. You can add more machines and they can all overlap or more screens per machine and they can overlap. And again, we're using uh, consumer uh, grade projectors here, so the resolution is a little bit lower. Uh, but actually, that's uh, good for us because it's a lot more of a challenge for the software to make these look good. So the first thing we need to do is create our overlap. And uh, we know what the overlap is. Um, Obviously, you may not know what the overlap is. Uh, you may need to uh, sort of modify it on the fly, or maybe you know exactly what your content is, and that's fine, uh, whichever way you want to do it. Um, basically, what you can do is you can change this on the fly, go back, change things, whatever you need. We know it is actually uh, 1898 by 768. That's the size of our content, so we're just going to set that up that way, and then it'll automatically create the blend at that end. Okay, so we've just overlapped it. Now we just hit Save. And you'll see that immediately it vaguely adjusts the content to match. Uh, you can see that it uh, doesn't look great, but obviously that's why we're doing our warping and blending. Let's uh, go into our shaping part. And the shaping part is this little button up here in the corner. Now, real important is that I'm working on a laptop that's driving the playout machine remotely. So again, I've selected the actual playout machine up here and I'm using the laptop uh, to actually then do all the shaping and warping, but I'm seeing the content and the warping and the shaping from the playout engine on my actual screen, so I don't have to be local to the machines. It's all done remotely. It's uh, very powerful. So here we go. Let's go into the shaping tool, and here is our actual shaping uh, tool set. So what you'll see, first of all, is that we have this uh, fantastic interface. Uh, you can see up here is our control for a lot of the basic settings. Uh, here you have the control for the points, undo, zoom in, zoom out, that kind of thing. Up here you have a schematic view of our actual screen setup. And we don't show the actual uh, overlap here because we don't need it, but it's just showing the position roughly of the different screens. And you can uh, click back and forth. If you have more screens, it'll show them all there with labels and all of that sort of thing. Down here then you have your actual control panels for the warping, the edge blending, and then our output options such as uh, color correction, etc., etc. So let's um, start off and um, let's sort of look at uh, some of these options. So the first thing is here I can enable and disable the actual warping in the soft edge while I'm working uh, to see that. Um, I can turn it into a solo output so I just see one screen or the other and I see the entire content on one screen. Uh, I can show the test pattern on my output or I can show my actual content. Now this is real important. What we're actually doing here is we're working in the same tool that's playing out our content. So it's not a separate tool, it's exactly the same and I can switch back and forth between test patterns and my actual content to work with. Uh, I have several different test patterns I can work with. Uh, right now we have sort of a circle grid uh, diagonal line one, but I can have just circles, I can just have diagonal lines. You can see all of these can be animated and I have a lot of settings for them that I can change. So for example, the size, uh, the speed that they're animated at, um, the width of the lines, for example, uh, background, foreground colors, all of that sort of thing. If I go to a different test pattern, maybe like color bars, I can, again, change the uh, values and the controls for each one. So um, I'm going to be working in this circle, grid, and diagonal line one most of the time because I find that's the most useful. And I'm going to start off with a little bit higher spacing because I don't need quite so much information at the first uh, 
sort of stage. Um, it gets a little bit too confusing. Also, I can increase the line uh, width a little bit. And you can dynamically change this as you work. The other thing is we use a lot of keyboard shortcuts. You're just a lot faster working with the keys. Here, they're all labeled so that you can easily see exactly um, what keys are what. It's very easy to quickly refer to them. Although, once you've worked with it uh, for a little bit, you'll know them automatically anyway. Uh, we can dim the uh, actual content output, especially with really bright content. If you're staring at it for a long time, uh, we want you to uh, not have an eye burnout within uh, a few minutes. So, you can just dim down the content. You can change the background color. And here, uh, what we can do, and this is really, really cool in individuals, we can actually have the interface on your output. So while I'm looking at the actual screens, you can see here I have a mouse cursor. And this mouse cursor is actually being displayed on my screens via my projector. Uh, so that's really great. And if I uh, take, bring in a uh, sort of control point, you can see I can see the control point with the control handles on the actual screen. Okay, so the first step we need to do is uh, do some basic keystoning. So we're going to be in this two by two grid. We only have four control points and we're just going to match the screens to the uh, rough dimensions of what we're working with. So uh, one thing that's important is if I drag a point out of bounds, so outside the projector space, I immediately get a nice red feedback telling me I'm losing uh, content. It's outside the area that the projector can cover. So that's real good uh, visual feedback that I'm getting. Okay, so I'm just going to adjust these uh, four points. Uh, you can see, because there's only four to deal with, it's actually quite easy. Set it all up, do my basic warping, move that guy a little bit back. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let me switch to the other projector. You saw that's really easy up there. I can just click on that, or I can use the Alt and the cursor keys. And uh, just adapt these guys here, move that guy over a little bit. Okay. And I'm immediately also, you know, seeing uh, above all my screen space which points I'm, I'm pulling and stuff like that. So it's quite easy to use. All right, so I've adjusted all my corners, and we're, here we're not trying to get it perfect. We're trying to get it roughly approximated so that the basic dimensions of the screen lab are uh, matching to what I have. Okay, so now if I switch the content on, you can see immediately what I have, and I can see, okay, there's some ghosting going on in the middle, and that looks, uh, that's, but it's a good first step. And uh, from this, then I can pretty easily get into some finer detail, and so that's the next step. We'll go into more detail and adjust it more closely. Obviously, the uh, rough keystoning is not going to be enough to, uh, you know, get in there. So we can actually increase the resolution. And the way that we've built our system here is to have several layers that increase in resolution. This is the benefit that you can then flip back and forth between the layers without losing any edits you've made in any of the other layers. So, you know, you have your 2x2 two two keystone at one layer. Then under that, we have a 9-point grid. Then under that, a 25-point grid. And you can go in and do as many points as you want. You can also locally inject points and we can also then move the control points on the finest layer. But to start off with what I'm just going to do is I'm actually just going to go in my uh, 3 by 3 layer and just start moving points. Now using the mouse cursor here, that's not going to be enough resolution. It's going to be too uh, clunky. So really I'm going to have to go into the keyboard uh, shortcuts. And we have a lot of keyboard shortcuts for uh, using these points. So the first one is uh, just with the cursor keys, I can actually move, jump around between the points. And that's really good. And then holding shift, I can uh, then actually just move the points themselves. With uh, period and comma, I can increase and decrease the sensitivity or the movement speed of these actual points. Then with uh, control, I can actually jump to the handles, which I can move with the cursor keys. So that's really, you know, you can jump to anything. And then with Alt and the cursor keys, I can jump back and forth between the two or, uh, projectors. So in this case, two projectors. In other cases, maybe more. So the first thing is obviously I'm just going to move this middle point a little bit. And I can see, okay, so that's, you know, sort of vaguely... So the first thing, then after I've done that, is I'm going to uh, jump over here to my actual uh, handle, and I'm going to uh, try and just uh, sort of adjust the handle a little bit. Now, the problem that I have if I start doing this is I'm actually warping the content quite badly. So I don't want to do too much of this. Uh, let's uh, jump to the other point, and let's also shift to a 3x3 three three matrix here. And we can see that this point, I can probably actually do more good by just bringing this point over a little bit. It's uh, something like that. And we'll just uh, switch back over to the other screen and adjust that a little bit. I'm getting a little bit better. And we can really now go in and just uh, add uh, resolution and 
tweak that a little bit. So, okay, one thing I see here is that, you know, if I bring this over too much, it's going to start squashing things and it's going to look a little bit weird. So I'm going to have to work not only with the handles, but I'm probably going to have to add geometry. Now, you don't want to add too much geometry because then really you're going to start losing uh, context. But let's switch to our 5x5 five five layer. And I probably don't want to start warping from all the way over here. I really want to be editing here. So either I could inject a whole new column of points and work with that. That's fine. We can do that. But one of the great features we actually have is I can select this layer of points, hold control in my right mouse cursor, and I can move these control points to the area that I actually want to be working on. So I'm going to be wanting to shift this area right about there. And now I've dropped the points there, and I can actually just bring this out, move that in right locally, keeping the actual deformation local to the area that I'm working on right there. So that's really a very, very useful um, little feature that we have. Okay, so I'm just going to spend some time adjusting this, and we'll see where I can get with that. All right, so now we've uh, just fixed up the last little bits and pieces here and made it uh, really optimal. So looking at this, now obviously the big issue that we still have to fix is we have to go in and uh, fix this edge blend. So let's start off with that. Now one thing we often will have is that the two projectors will have different colors or different um, sort of uh, problems with uh, maybe gamma correction or color values or whatever. And we have ability to correct that at a projector or screen wide uh, level. So let's uh, just go in here. I'm not going to really do much um, color correction on these screens because obviously with these projectors uh, that's not going to help a whole lot. Um, so we're just going to go right into the edge blending. So to do that you can see we have warping and the next step here is edge blending and there's a lovely check mark use automatic edge generation and we're just going to do that. First thing you notice is that it automatically applies a edge blend and you can see here what I have now is a thumbnail system where I can actually see the blend up here. So I have my right screen, left screen and I can select the blend itself. You can see I now have in my control panel two ramps or gradients and I have my uh, gamma values, uh, so my gamma itself and then RGB uh, as actual sliders. And the other thing that I also can do is I might want to set up a test pattern. So I have my test pattern set up and um, now what I want to do is I really want to go in and uh, set a value. Now, if I just change the value, you notice it's going to change it on both because what we have is we have this link button which allows it to uh, symmetrically drive. I can also turn that off and have it drive asymmetrically if I want to change one or the other. And I can see that, you know, for a value of, you know, 0 0.4142, wow, okay, so we don't have to do a whole lot else. Now, obviously, if I untick this, I can go in and I can manually in the interface adjust uh, the blending and also you can see the points themselves uh, for the left and the right uh, screen and I can also increase and do separate layers and all of that sort of thing if I want to. Um, maybe I have a separate warping on my um, on my actual uh, screen uh, to let me just reset these guys because obviously it's going in there but if I want a separate warping from the edge blend to the rest I, I can do that. So we're just going to go in and again, I'm just going to set up a, what did we say, it was 0.4, something like that. That looks actually really good. That's even a little bit lower, so 0.23. Very good. So now if we switch to our content, there you go. Automatic edge blend. So that's uh, as difficult as it gets. Obviously also the other thing we can is right now we're doing a linear blend. If I want to change a curve, I can turn on my uh, sort of, uh, oops, I should really set that back obviously changing the link, it's now symmetrized it. And I can go in here and I can change the curves themselves if I prefer. And you can see then also the changes. So I can really go in and, and create my own curves. And I can do that for RGB or gamma separately uh, and adjust really fine tune those curves with multiple points and all of that sort of thing for a little bit more control. Right, there we go. And that's as easy as it was. Okay, so we've now done pretty much all the work we want to do. Obviously, we can tweak this ad nauseum and make it absolutely perfect, but, you know, for now, that's good. So, real important, save your configuration. That way, it's all saved down. And now you can either close and go out of it. So, just hit back, and it'll now go to your screen setup tool. And you can see on screen, it looks pretty decent. Great thing is you can always go back into the shaping. So if something happens, an earthquake moves all your projectors or somebody runs into them, whatever, you can always go back into the shaping and immediately fix things and change things. Uh, you're warping your edges at any resolution. So even just changing the keystoning, if I need to just go back and tweak a minor thing, it's all possible without losing anything. 
And that was it. So we'd love to hear uh, what you guys make of it. This is a, you know, our new tool set, so we're really curious to see what people uh, come up with and what works. And um, we think it's pretty powerful. We think you're going to be able to do a lot of stuff uh, really intuitively and quickly. And uh, love to hear your feedback. And like I say, love to see any projects that uh, people come up with. So thanks a lot. And uh, hope to see you in the next video.